Hi everyone, this is Holly. This video will show you how I created my ultra thin swirl soap for the Soap Challenge Club. In case you're interested in my other two attempts at this technique, I'll include some footage and photos of those at the end of this video. Our guest instructor for this challenge was Tatiana Serco of Creative Soaps by Stesso. Tatiana is an amazing instructor and created a wonderful tutorial for us this month. I'll provide links below to both Tatiana and the Soap Challenge Club. Remember to protect your skin and eyes when making soap. And if you're a beginner soap maker, be sure to check out the links below to videos and articles on life safety and basic soap making. I chose to go with an orange, red, and burgundy color palette for this soap using orange, brown, pink, and purple clays, plus a little indigo root powder. I only needed a very small amount of each clay, so I simply mixed about one teaspoon of each with a little distilled water. This was actually enough clay for this soap, plus the two batches I show at the end of the video. I also mixed some indigo root powder with sunflower oil to help with the pink, red, and burgundy colors. I wanted the rest of the soap to be as close to white as possible, so I decided to use titanium dioxide. The kind I have is water soluble, so I mixed one teaspoon with some warm water. In the tutorial for this technique, we were given two recipes to try. I based my recipe on the one from Terry at Tree Marie Soapworks when she taught us the clamshell technique. Since it's not my recipe to share, I won't be listing it below. However, if you're interested in this particular recipe, I'll be sure to leave a link below to the Soap Challenge Club where you can purchase access to past tutorials. I blended the oils and lye just to an emulsion and then divided off 15% of the soap for the colors. In order to know how much soap to divide out, I first weighed my entire batch and subtracted the bowl and spoon weight. This gave me the weight of the soap, which I then multiplied by 15%. Then I measured out that amount into five small cups, as you see here. For each color, I added drops of the various clays, or clays plus indigo, until I reached the color I wanted. You'll see me using my small blender just to make sure everything was mixed well. I used a very small amount of the orange I like clay to get the light orange colored soap. I added a couple of drops at a time until I was happy with the color. For the dark orange soap, I used a combination of the orange, pink, and brown clays. To create a pink soap, I used the pink kale and clay plus a couple of drops of indigo to give the pink a bit of a cooler hue. For the dark red, I used the same pink clay and indigo, however I added more of each, being careful to just add a little at a time, checking the color and adding more as needed.
To create the burgundy soap, I use the purple and pink clays plus drops of indigo. When I'm using a colorant like indigo that looks more gray and raw soap but changes color during gel phase, I try to keep in mind how it will affect the color in the finished soap and not use too much. They probably all look a bit dark here, but even the clay soaps will be brighter after going through gel. I added the full teaspoon of titanium dioxide to the rest of the soap and blended it just a little to incorporate. Before I pour the soap, I wanted to mention that I poured the colors from up high at first so they would sink through the base, and then I poured closer to the surface to have some soap on top. I think I should have poured from a bit higher or used more soap for the colors, maybe like 18%, because they didn't really go all the way through. and process the soap to make sure it went through gel phase. My oven process involves placing the soap in a warm oven that's been turned off and leaving the oven light on for a few hours. I removed the soap the next morning leaving it covered and allowed it to completely cool. If I'm concerned about ash on top of a soap, I'll generally leave it for another 24 hours before removing the top and exposing it to air. Since I knew I'd be planing this soap, I went ahead and removed it from the mold so it would be hard enough to cut and plane the next day. <music> 